Hey everyone, Jason from AlphaTone Audio back again. Today I want to talk about what you do with cable that reaches its end of life. And this is especially for all you people out there that have probably built the cables yourself in the first place. So when you have a cable that you just don't need anymore, or you just don't need this, uh, this certain plug or jack that's on it, or it's just torn up, or for whatever reason, uh, there's a decision you can make. And there's usually two things that can happen. One, it goes into that box of cables that you swear you'll need again one day, and it just kind of like grows and grows over time and just takes that space in your closet or whatever, or you could be a little bit more proactive and you could actually recycle the cable, which means you could use it for something else. So there's two things you can do. One, you can choose to reclaim the cable, which in this particular case I'm not because this cable is truly ancient and it's past its effective lifestyle. It's pretty noisy at this point. There are chunks out of the PVC along it. Uh, it's just no good and I'm going to dispose of it. However, we still have some perfectly good plugs on each end of this cable that I'm going to recycle. So having said that, I'm going to break this down. Now, if you build your own cables at home, that's awesome. And if you've gotten pretty good at soldering, that's awesome as well. However, what we're going to do today, we're actually going to be doing rework or reflowing these solder joints because I have to desolder the cable from the plug in order to reuse it. And reflowing a joint is quite a bit different and potentially more complex from flowing it in the first place. And again, like I said, this is called rework or reflow. And if you get into this, or specifically you ask the questions, how many times can you actually melt solder and still have the joint be good? Uh, the answer is it's actually a pretty low number. And if you start to dig into this, you're going to find lots and lots of information out there. You'll probably see lots of comments on forums from uh, process engineers or industrial engineers and they'll have certifications like IPC where they've actually been trained to look for defects in soldering joints and uh, you'll find all kinds of information out there on the different fluxes and the temperatures and why rework is such a bad thing in the first place and you'll learn all about the kind of metallurgy that goes on whenever you actually solder something together. They'll be talking about all these intramatic layers of the crystal lattices that are formed between the solder and what you're actually soldering onto. And if you basically heat the solder up and let it cool too many times, it actually disturbs all those crystals in there and it causes it to become very brittle. And you can actually have it just, your, your solder joint will fail for sure after a certain amount of times. Um, if you do a PCB work, they'll talk about the breakdown, the evaporation of the solder pads on the PCBs. From a component level, they'll be talking about the different uh, soldering profiles based for the individual components and this is all based on heat reaction kinetics and all the physics behind it and not to mention all the flux that's already on it if you have to flow additional flux into it during the rework process um, if you have to deal with any of those very difficult to remove no clean fluxes or any of that kind of thing so if, like I said, if you start to do your own research on this, you can go into a very, very deep dive. And at the end of the day, that's probably all a little bit too complicated for what we're going to have to deal with. So what I want to do today is I just want to give you three simple tricks or three simple techniques that you can use that if you want to reuse plugs, that you can put yourself in a position to make sure that you're always going to have a clean surface to resolder. So I've got this spot cleaned up. Let's get this into the vise so I can desolder this. Okay, like I said, three things that you can do to make sure this plug is in the best shape you can possibly get it in for reuse. One, you wanna remove all the solder. You don't wanna be mixing old solder with new solder. So we're gonna get all that off. Two is you wanna make sure that all the flux is removed. Now one and two, you can kind of do at the same time as we go through and clean this up and I'll show you how that works. And then three, we're going to take this opportunity to clean the actual contact points on the plug. So. One, as far as getting all the solder off, there's two main techniques that I use for this. One is just to use a solder pump, and these things are very cheap, and it's essentially just a little vacuum pump. Um, push the slide up, and then when you hit the button, it pops out, a little bit of vacuum action, and it just sucks the solder right off. Uh, the other method that you can use is solder wick, and this is basically just a copper braid, and it's gonna use the capillary action. As you heat the solder up, you're just gonna run this over top of it, and it's just gonna suck the solder up like a sponge. Um, I've got a couple different brands on this. From what I can tell, these are all completely interchangeable. I have no preference. Um, this one is a little bit wider. I'm using two and a half millimeter width on this, which is good enough. I want something a little bit bigger, uh, just because I'm working with a fairly large area here. Uh, so I'm gonna use this, and I just get this stuff on Amazon. I don't do a lot of this kind of stuff, so I just buy small quantities and this is fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the vacuum pump first, and I'm going to take off this residual wire, and then I'm gonna come in with the solder wick, and I'm going to clean up. 
and I'm also going to turn on the fume extractor here. Okay, this looks pretty good. I didn't want to talk over the fume extractor. So two things. Um, one, yeah, when your wigs start to get saturated, uh, just clip it off and go to a new piece. And um, secondly, this one was actually pretty clean. There was a solder on it, but there wasn't a lot of flux. This one I have over here uh, is quite a bit dirtier as far as the rosin-based flux residue probably a little bit hard to see but if you look you're going to see a little bit of like amber discoloration there's like a little bit right down here and there's quite a lot up top on the tip um, it originally may looks like a reflection from this bit of copper exposed but that is um, that that any of the amber color resin looking stuff that's on there that's all rosin based flux that needs to come off and, and again this is as soon as you hit, the, hit it with the heat, it'll boil up and it'll come right off and the solder paste will suck it up. Now, the thing about the flux is why we're taking that off. Most, and again, most of the stuff that you're gonna do for audio, you're gonna be using a rosin-based flux, which comes from pine sap, basically, and it has that brown color to it. Now, at room temperature, it should be stable, okay? Going back to the purpose of what flux is, it's gonna basically clean your surface so you get a good solder joint. And by cleaning, it basically deoxidizes it. You know, anything that you, a lot of stuff that you can't see, it cleans that up. Um, and that, like I said, at most fluxes, not all fluxes, but most fluxes are stable at room temperature, uh, which means that it's not going to be cleaning when it's at room temperature. It's only gonna do it when it's actually heated up during the soldering operation. The reason why, I talked about this earlier, why it can be a big difference when you get into like PVC or manufacturing operations is because if this is an active circuit, the circuit is, could possibly heat up to a point where it gets hot enough to reactivate that flux. So is it a big deal for us? No, I don't think it's actually a big deal because if there is any residue on there, it's probably not gonna continue to corrode your plug, but as long as we're cleaning up, it's so little additional effort to go ahead and clean it off, they were just gonna go ahead and do it anyway. So just a little bit of extra information for you there. So this plug actually looks pretty good. So I have all the solder off. We have nice shiny surfaces. Um, there's some here on the bottom, I'm not gonna do it, but make sure you check both sides. Some people actually take the ground and they'll wrap it around the bottom and you'll have solder on the side. I would just go ahead and take it all off because just when you heat this side up, the solder is probably gonna melt as well. Just get it all off. So I'm gonna say step one is complete on that and we're gonna take one more step to make sure we get all of the flux off of this. Okay, like I said, I think this is pretty clean. We're just gonna do one more thing just for a little bit of extra preventative measure. I wanna hit this with some Flux Wash. And Flux Wash is a very generic product. It's not specific to this particular brand. This is, um, I think, I believe I get this through k Labs or the Deoxid brand, but there are many, many different varieties of this. Um, again, for me, they're all pretty interchangeable. Maybe you have a favorite, that's fine. Some people will use uh, just generic kind of solvents, anything from ethyl alcohol all the way up to acetone to remove this additional flux that may remain on there. Um, I try to stay away from 
powerful solvents whenever I have to, so I have no problem just using this stuff in the can. Again, I use very little. I can this stuff easily, lasts me a couple years. And it's pretty simple. We're just, just gonna spray it, let it sit for a few seconds. I'm just gonna wipe it off with a clean cloth. If you do have some stuff on there that's a little bit more persistent and doesn't wanna come off, you can always go back to the soldering iron and the soldering wick to try to get that off, or you can actually be pretty aggressive saying this is just, I mean, again, we're not working on PCB stuff here. It's just a hunk of metal. So you can either get an old toothbrush or you can even get in there with a small wire brush and you can give it a good scrub and make sure that all that stuff is gone. And this stuff will evaporate pretty quickly, so it's not like you have to give it a lot of time to dry or anything. Hit all the surfaces that are going to be resoldered. And this probably isn't the greatest cloth. This is an old t-shirt, but Looks like it didn't tear off any little bits of copper or cotton fiber or anything like that, so. Okay, and lastly, now that we have all the solder points clean, we're gonna step three and we're gonna actually clean this part of the plug, which is what's gonna contact and form your audio connection. And there's a couple different things we can use to do that. One, I really like deoxit, the D5. This is this the standard cleaner. And then you also have on this hand, you have the deoxid gold G5. Uh, according to their literature, the way I understand it, uh, they make lots of claims for both these products, but this is a little bit more of a cleaner and this is a little bit more of a contact enhancer. And they specifically say this is great for plated materials and specifically if you're using the audio plugs that have the gold on them, this has a little bit of an edge. So basically if you're starting off with a really, really dirty plug, you might want to start with the D5. And if you already have something that's very clean or you just have a gold plug, you may want to use this just to make sure that it stays in really, really good condition. Now, of course, you, this is a good idea to use just about any time. You don't always have to wait till you're doing an operation like this to use this, especially if you have really nasty chemistry in your hands, especially if you're one of those guitar or bass players that goes through strings really, really quickly and you just, your chemistry just tends to be pretty hard on metal. This is always a good idea to just go over your plugs every couple months or maybe even once a month, depending on how bad it is. So I get a clean cloth, not the one I use the flux wash with and just spray a little bit on there and just give a little bit of a wipe and that'll just clean any oils or junk that collects on the plugs off and allegedly give you a little bit of improved connectivity on there. It's very hard to measure, I would imagine. But anyway, I hear lots of people rave about this stuff. I've been using it for a long time. And of course you can use this in pots and other kind of things. This can of this is always handy to have around. And if you get like a you know, scratchy pot, you can spray this stuff in there and that'll take care of it too. So, and again, this is very fast evaporating. It should be gone in no time. So there you have it. There is our reclaimed plug ready for use, ready for a second life for certainly at least a few more years, if not 10 years or more into a new cable. So again, just because you have an old cable doesn't mean you necessarily have to throw everything away. There's no reason why you can't reclaim some of these parts and use them over and over again, especially if you're on a budget and you need to save a few bucks. So that's all I have for this video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, please hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you next time.